there folks and welcome or welcome back to Nippon Trading International's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host Ziv Nakajima again and this podcast is brought to you among others by Emil Gorgis of realestate.jp. He's a Tokyo real estate agent who specializes in serving international or mixed nationality families who are looking for the perfect family home. So Emil's an Australian, he's been living here in Japan for over two decades now, and for about half of that time he's been buying, selling, and managing real estate properties in Tokyo on behalf of his own family and a great many happy clients. And he also acts as a mortgage broker on behalf of his clients. So he's got dedicated loan officers in many of the Japanese mega banks. And if you're a regular listener of the podcast, you probably already know him from our JREP, the Japan Real Estate Experts Panel Sessions which means that you're already aware of the fact that the man is an absolute fountain of wisdom on all things related to real estate in Japan, and in particular to family homes, the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, and mortgages. And most importantly, he's incredibly generous with his time and advice, which he's more than happy to provide at no cost or commitment to anyone asking. So if you've been thinking about buying your home in Tokyo, but you've been sitting on the fence for a while, or you just want to have a chat in English with a real expert, Drop him a line on sales at realestate.jp. Hit him up today and start exploring your options. All right, so before we get into today's episode, which by the way is the last one for this year, just a heads up, ticketing for the inaugural Japan Real Estate Summit conference in Tokyo, which we've been going on for a while about uh, here on the podcast, Uh, is now officially open. So again, we're limited to 80 seats and half of those have already pre-registered. So I wouldn't sit on your hands. Get to it pronto if you want to secure your spot. We've also got early bird tickets for you until the end of December for only 4,000 yen instead of the normal ticket price, which is 5,000 yen, um, which is going to be available from January and until tickets run out, which again is probably going to happen very soon. So if you know you'll be in Tokyo on Saturday, 4th February 2023, which is a month's time or so uh, as of the publishing of this episode, pause this playback, hop over to realestate.jp right now and get your ticket. All of our JREP members, Tracy, Blanca, Emil, Matt and myself are looking forward to seeing you with us on the day. Okay, so for today, a short conversation with a new client, and there's two parts to it. The first is our usual real estate property chat, so we are focusing on loans for non-residents, portfolio structuring, diversity hedging, etc. And the second is an introduction to our new company, Nippon Bridge, which helps investors buy into Japanese franchise businesses and also provides other services like business setup, operational support, hiring, firing, Um, relocation support services and other bits and pieces that can help investors apply for and maintain a business management visa, live in Japan, and of course, make a handy profit in the meantime, usually higher than you can make with real estate investments, but a lot more hands-on. So good, well-rounded conversation. I hope you found some value in it. Uh, Enjoy the chat and I'll see you again on the other side. So I've looked down through your email you were talking about loans but then you've sort of abandoned that plan yes uh because i actually went through all your materials well most most that i can find yeah uh and then yes apparently as a non-resident it would be quite difficult star bank bank of china uh uh, lots of hurdles as well and some of it doesn't make sense okay yeah so that means uh, then I can only play within what within whatever cash I have on hand. Yeah, so you're in the same boat with the rest of our customers. I thought for some reason that because <laughs> you've got the uh, Taiwan or China connection there, it might be easier, but um, not the case, I take it. Yeah, uh, I had hoped, but apparently the banking system here uh, is not actually connected to their sister banks. Okay, so the fact that they exist in Japan is just for Taiwanese residing in Japan, is it? To that extent, and Japanese uh, customers. Gotcha. Okay, well, we'll put that aside then. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's all I can do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how can we help otherwise? You've mentioned buildings, and then you've also mentioned some units. So w- what's your interest? What, what, what is it in the property profiles that appeals or doesn't appeal to you? Uh, I love the ones uh, which are near places of importance, like the one in Sapporo next to the uh, medical university. Yeah. Or the one in Yokohama, which is actually, I remember, four stops away from Yokohama Station. Yeah. 
uh, uh, because to these uh, these types of properties appeal because it seems like uh, rent will definitely not be an issue. Yeah, and uh, liquidity in the future should also be much easier. And even if it's a redevelopment, it has higher chance. Not that it's a hundred percent, but. It's a higher chance of redevelopment, should there be any. Yep. Okay. So we agree on those. And the you are leaning towards the units uh, as opposed to the buildings because of the capital expenditure? Yes. Uh, yeah. I initially wanted to do an uh, upscale share house uh, because I've been in situations where share house or dormitories don't really work. Yeah. Because you're, you're starting off and then you're starting off with a career and you need your private space and you just want to feel relaxed when you get home. But at the same time, you want some sort of social connection. So I was thinking about upscale share house, but obviously uh, 150000 just won't cut it. Yeah, plus you need to be setting up a company and hire yeah. staff or find local management companies that can handle share houses, which it's a lot more involved than your typical um, yes. semi-passive property investment. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so 150K is our limit for the units, I take it? Yes. That's it US, yeah? Yes, yes, US. Okay, so that makes, I mean... We want to diversify without sacrificing, you know, the tenant profile too much. Maybe we can fit in two units for this price. Otherwise, one single unit. I guess it depends as well on your yield requirements. So I'm not sure. Did you have a minimum yield requirement? Have you thought about cash flow? Where do you stand? Are you invested in, are you invested in any other asset classes anywhere else in the world? Uh other or, uh, yeah, other parts of Asia, yes. I'm okay. still invested in Southeast Asia mostly. Uh, so for Japan, I would like to take a crack at it. Uh, so anything above, well, I mean, yield, uh, the higher it is, the better. <laughs> but of course, uh, realistically, uh, based on what I researched, anything around 5% above is actually considered quite good. Net before tax, right? So just yes, the net before thing. tax. Okay. Yes. And um, yeah, so that's still, I mean, not central Tokyo, central Osaka, but otherwise that's still very doable, I think. Yeah. Um, so it seems like a lot of places. The rest of your holdings, just so I know what kind of locations or profiles we're aiming, the rest of your holdings, are they mostly cash flow oriented, potential growth oriented, like the other mm -hmm. the other investments you've got? What what What's their characteristics? Uh, Malaysia was uh, cash flow oriented, oriented uh, until, well, ring it, ring it bust, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, and Indonesia is more capital growth. Uh, if you buy in early, which I did, it tends to double or triple within okay. seven years. But even uh, even that boom is soon to be over. So thinking about using those units as cash flow. Okay. And Taiwan, use, uh, most of the time, is cash flow. Okay, so if you're comfortable being close to that 5% mark, um, and just because you're just starting your portfolio here in Japan, I'd yes. maybe... If it was up to me, I'd maybe steer you towards more safe and stable locations, even if they're slightly lower on the yield. So, for example, uh, Fukuoka City, suburban Osaka, uh, Kawasaki, central Kobe, maybe. Um, oh. I was maybe, actually looking at a few. Fukuoka. Maybe Chiba City. Yeah, Fukuoka is a very good place if you're okay. I mean, 5% is sometimes difficult close to the center, but still doable, I think. Uh, as long as, uh, well, as long as it's filled, right? Yeah. Uh, a month filled is better than not filled. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as long that we're on the same wavelength there, which is good. So... How can we help? Do you have samples that you want us to look at and give you our opinion about? Do you want us to research for you? How do you want to take it next? I mean, I, I did find a few, but they're definitely because it's uh, catered for ex uh, expats. Yeah. 
because those websites are in English. Uh, for the Japanese websites, uh, it takes me much longer <laughs> to yeah. read through them. No, uh, basically because I'm not very good at Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Well, at uh, least you got the kanji down, right? Yes, to an extent. Yeah. Uh, because quite a lot of the kanji Japanese use, they use it differently. Yeah. So uh, I had to do a lot of translations for those. I have heard that. Oh, oh I'm experienced with these Japanese ones, but I hear they're sometimes uh, even contradictory, right? They might say yes. the exact opposite in some cases. Okay, so do you want, I mean, we can put in a couple of hours of free research um, off the Japanese websites, just to give you an idea of what's out there that might suit your criteria. Beyond yeah, uh, that, for us to start contacting agents and sellers and doing mm -hmm. due diligence and submitting offers, we will need to be engaged. So yes. it's up to you. We can start with the free research and then kick off the engagement process when you're ready to move forward, or we can kick it off straight away so that you're not limited on research time. It's totally up to uh, you. Uh, why, why don't I uh, just email you some of the ones that I actually uh, have been looking into? Yep. All right, from other websites. And then based on those, you, you, you can please help me with the research. Sounds good. And then, and then let's kick it off from there. Perfect. I'll wait for your email. We interrupt this broadcast to tell you about Tokyo Family Stays. They're a short-term rentals company in Tokyo, and they offer a home away from home experience, which is just perfect for remote working, quarantining, if that's still a thing, or if you just need somewhere quiet to get away from the world. They offer a variety of options for families, corporate relocations, or even if you're simply transitioning between homes in Tokyo. The properties are super comfortable, tastefully furnished, fully equipped with all amenities, and they accommodate up to 10 people. So really the only thing you'll need to bring with you is your toothbrush and maybe a change of clothes. They come with fast unlimited wireless internet, dedicated workspaces, and fully equipped kitchens, and they're just a delight to stay in. Fantastic alternative to Japanese business hotels, which if you've ever stayed in one, you probably know they're tiny, they're noisy, fine for a night or two if you're on your own, but longer term or with a family, you'll probably feel you're in a jail cell very quickly in a Japanese business hotel. So if you want to give yourself a sense of space and freedom by renting a real home, with comfortable Western beds, including all the necessities like baby bedding, children's toys, high chairs, etc. You definitely want to reach out to Tokyo Family Stays. They've been at it for over a decade. They're a fully licensed minpaku or short-term stay operator. And as a special bonus for our viewers and listeners, they're also throwing in a breakfast basket upon arrival for anyone who books and mentions the Japan Real Estate Podcast or NTI. And not only for guests, if you're a property owner, you've got an investment property that you want to tweak for higher profit, or a holiday home that you want to rent out when you're not using it via short-term stays, drop them a line today, see how they can help you maximize your property's income. And again, as a special bonus to our viewers and listeners, they're also offering a free audit of your existing short-term stay listings without any obligation whatsoever. So feel free to reach out to them at tokyofamilystays.com. Well worth a visit. And again, if you're in the market for a family home in or around the Tokyo metropolitan area, Emil's your man. Don't be shy to reach out to him as well at sales at realestate.jp. And now back to the podcast. All right. Great. Uh, and then I was actually also looking at your Nippon Bridge. That one is actually very interesting. Yeah. That's the, the whole company. business concept. Yep. I don't think anyone's doing it yet. That's why we're trying to uh, tap that niche. I think there's a lot of people looking for it. I mean, looking for higher yield investments and also looking for potentially getting a business management visa. Yeah. So I mean, we're uh, we can help them. A lot of people think about immigration through investment, but uh, it's because investment is very wide and they don't know where to start off. Uh, using uh, what you call it, franchises, using the franchises is actually a very, very smart move. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. That's what we think so too. Yeah, uh, and it just blew my mind when I saw it. I just, I just saw it and it blew my mind. I'm wondering if I, if, uh, if you won't mind a collaboration with Taiwan for it, because I do know a lot of Hong, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Vietnamese wants the same thing, but for Taiwan. Well, from our perspective, we can service anyone that we can communicate with. So we don't still don't have any. Um, Chinese speakers on staff, I guess if we have enough customers, we could hire someone. So for us to collaborate, if your, refer if your referrals don't speak English, um, 
there would need to be an account manager who can communicate with them attached to their account constantly. So I'm not sure if that's something you've got the bandwidth for. Um, yeah. But if you've got English speaking potentials, then we're very happy to talk to them and we'll definitely share our commissions with you. No, yeah. I'm just, uh, wanna, I want to learn more about Nip on Bridge because it's very, very, uh, very, very good business concept because uh, uh, some of the friends I have, they are, also interested in investing uh, for property. But when I mentioned Nippon Bridge and the business format, they're like, yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> well, with property, I mean, you can get a business management visa via property, but the amount that you need to constantly renew the visa is usually not going to be achievable unless you invest half a million US or more. So the franchise businesses are just a cheaper way to get into there. And also the yield can be a lot higher if the business does well. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully it'll, um, it'll, I, I think it fills in the gaps for a lot of people that have been looking for something like that. So we'll see how we go, but yeah, please do feel free to uh, refer anyone or we can book another day if you want to do a call. Sure. 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 Uh, there is one, the second hand uh, franchise, just out of curiosity, how, how did you get to know them or uh, get meet their acquaintance, that connection? Um, so they're advertising, Basically, we're getting in touch with either operators who have worked with them before, or we just oh. get in touch with them directly. We went to the uh, Osaka Franchise Expo, for example, and we got a few details from another few franchise chains who are looking for franchisees. It's just making the contact. Most of them are quite happy to work with any kind of franchisee, but obviously, Japan being Japan, they don't have the experience of working with foreigners. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them are very open to collaboration. So... It's an easy relationship to form, just um, ironing all the kinks out customer by customer is what takes time because the real challenges are on the Japanese side. Whenever there's a non-resident owned entity, everything becomes complicated. So to open a bank account, to sign a rental lease for the shop, to sign the contract with the franchisor, we need to hold the hand of all the uh, third parties involved and, and show them how to do it. So it takes a bit of time, but they're all very open to it. Uh, we've got high hopes for that one. So the uh, the secondhand goods shop Daikichi, we've actually got a customer opening the first opened the first shop uh, about a month ago in Tokyo. Now wow. in the midst of advertising and promoting, we hired a manager, and she's now hiring another assistant manager. So it's a lot slower than property investment. It's not immediate turnkey like uh, day one tenanted property that just yes. generates income. Um, but yeah, exciting stuff. We'll see how we go. It is. Uh, good, uh, good luck on that. Thank voyage. you very much. Right, so uh, I'll, I'll wait for your email with the properties and we'll take it from there. And if you want to book another call um, to discuss this with you or with anyone you know, let me know. Okay, sure. No problem. Thank you for your time, Ziv. Thank you as well. Speak to you soon. I'll email you. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. Good, short, concise conversation on a bunch of topics relevant to investors uh, in Japan's property market, but also in general. Uh, again, I hope you found some value in it. And that's it from us for this year, folks. Hope you're enjoying a fantastic holiday season and wishing you a great 2023 in advance. I hope to see you with us at the February Japan Real Estate Summit in Tokyo. And again, if you haven't registered yet, now's definitely the time. So get yourselves over to realestate.jp and secure your spot today. Now, before we go, we're also, as always, going to tell you and also link to our other sponsor's website. That's Hiroshi Shimizu, immigration lawyer and administrative scrivener. If you're thinking about moving here on a more permanent basis, or you're already in Japan on some sort of a temporary visa, and you want to switch to a longer term or permanent one, or if you're considering setting up a local company or a branch office of a foreign company, and you've got any sort of business or visa-related inquiries, or even if you just want to find out what your options are on any of these topics, feel free to contact Hiroshi Shimizu. You can find him at japanimmigrationexperts.com and he can help you set up a company, apply for any kind of visa, or just provide you with the best advice and extremely affordable consultation related to these topics. And he's already done that for many of our listeners. So feel free to reach out to him. Again, that's japanimmigrationexperts.com and you'll be well on your way. And that's it from us for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Japan Real Estate Podcast. Do share it with your networks and please let us know what you think. So leave us a short rating or review 
on the iTunes store, on Spotify, or just drop us a line in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode. We love hearing from you.